thinking of having your windows replaced and like most of us that's probably because your old ones are worn out, drafty or need too much upkeep. So you may well feel that just having spanking new Anglian windows fitted is more than enough excitement, thank you very much. But really replacing windows is just the start. You see new windows are immediately the centre of attention. They are, believe me, and they affect the whole feel of the room. Anglian knows this only too well. They've made and fitted literally millions of windows and they get a lot of queries about how to make the most of them. So they've set up this studio for me, a bit like a giant doll's house really, to show you just some of the things to think about when you're planning your own well-dressed windows. to think about. I mean first it's all about the light. I mean what time of day do you use this room? It could be that the morning light is nice and bright and fresh and you're going to make most of that. Who also uses the room? You know is it for TV? Are the kids in there? Well, what's the effect you'd like? Perhaps it's a bold statement, a kind of strong focal point or maybe it's a frame for a beautiful view. Or maybe it's privacy, perhaps that's at the top of your list. Well, these are more than enough questions to start with. To answer some of them, I'm going to address two very different styles of window. A bay, which scares many people because it looks very tricky. But I'll show you it needn't be so. And French doors, which can be just as much of a challenge because they must work both as windows and doors. By the way, You'll notice the bay is a nice soft white from the Anglian White Knight range and the French doors, well they're in the very popular Anglian Golden Oak finish which lets me show you some very different colour schemes. And if you're not quite sure yet what feel you're looking for, I'm going to dress each window in both traditional and modern styles to give you a whole range of ideas. Now let's start with the bay and a traditional look. Now what exactly do I mean by traditional? Well, have a think of those stately homes you've visited recently or those grand castles. Their window coverings are heavily ornate and richly embellished, really robust fabrics. You're not going to see anything like a little pretty voil or sheer or lightly patterned gingham fabrics there, for example. You're going to want these. This is what we're about, kind of rich embroidery on some really solid base fabrics there. Damask, maybe boucle, lots of texture here. Maybe even some tartans. These are tartan wools, really lovely. You could have florals, but again, make sure that they're printed or woven onto a heavy fabric like this linen here. Silks are okay, but again, go for quality so the richness is there. Now, when it comes to fitting up the track, you can have almost anything you want these days. Traditionally, this used to be a difficult window to dress just because of that shape and it not being able to take the track or a pole. But modern track systems will fit the shape perfectly. They can be eased into a nice tight curve or even poles these days. They can be specially tailored to fit any shape. Do you want to see the track and the curtains that I've gone for? Take a look. I love these fabrics. Take a look at this. Damask, a very traditional woven fabric, a real favourite of mine. You can use either side of it. 
um, if you just turn it over, you've got a light side and a dark side on this one. And it really doesn't matter which side you use, depending exactly on what sort of colour preference you want. I went for a darker one where I've got more brown than the silvery blue. Take a look at this too. This is a rich cotton velvet. Think loads and loads of texture here. Put the two together, look at that. It's going to be stunning when you get that up at the window. Now, when you're thinking about your heading, there's loads to choose from, but what I've gone for is a very traditional heading. It's a goblet pleated heading. Now, you used to have to do goblet pleats by hand, but of course, there are tapes to do it for you these days. Just pull up these strings at the back of the tape, and then the, the little goblets form at the front. Now, that's going to look very stylish. When you're calculating the amount of fabric you need for this window, just estimate about two to two and a half times the width of the window for your curtains. But your pleating will, will tell you on the reverse, so just check out the manufacturer's instructions for that. Lining is really important. Traditionally, again, your windows would have curtains with interlining and heavy linings. You're not going to need that with Anglian windows, so we're just going to go for a lining. But again, be clever about it. I've chosen a colour here that complements my blues. Look at those together. That's going to start looking really nice. Now, when I bring those fabrics in conjunction with my blinds, this is what I've chosen to go underneath the windows for privacy and to screen the light. Again, lovely colours working really well together. You're not going to want nets or voils here. That is looking just right. Now, the beauty about these blinds is they come in ready-made sizes and you'll probably find a size to fit most windows. And they're easy to fit once you've got the hardware in position. Just tighten up the fixings, lower that part and that's it. And you can raise and lower these to whatever height you need them. pleating is looking really elegant here. You may see just down that pleat I've just put a little bit of wadding in to hold the shape. French doors, they look lovely, don't they? And it's a great way of bringing that outside feeling indoors. You really feel as if your room is part of the garden. Here we've got a lovely traditional golden oak finish and I want to emphasise that traditional look. The pole I'll be using for my curtains is an antiqued brass finish. Come and check this out. Now, the fabric that I've chosen for this windows is really special. It's Toile de Jouet, which traditionally is an 18th century French fabric. You see, I've got little cavorting peasants here on my printed fabric here. I've chosen lilac because that's a lovely, fresh look. But isn't it sweet? Really gorgeous here. Very modern these days as it's printed onto a beautiful, creamy linen. So I've got lots of texture in there. I'm also combining it with a coloured lining, again, because this is a French door, so you're going to see the lining from the other side of the door when you walk through it. So a little bit of colour there is going to be nice. And also, you will see a little bit of the lining fabric on the face of the curtains. You'll see that later when you've seen them hanging up at the window. A, a beautiful cotton net for screening and for privacy. Choose natural fabrics here, you don't want anything man-made. It's just going to add more to that texture and to the final look. 
I've also combined a little bit of trimming with my curtains. You can go all sorts of trimmings to choose from. There's masses in the shops. Cotton fringing, even these cotton bobbles look really sweet, or coloured fringing. But the one I finally selected was this silk bullion fringing. I'm thinking of contrasting textures all the time. We've got our lovely slubby linen, we've got our silky bullion heading and our coloured linings. Perfect. I think it's time to hang these, don't you? Now this is what I meant about the lining being on the front of the curtain. It looks really pretty here. And check out the antique brass finish on this pole. It really enforces that traditional look we're after. You saw me using the goblet pleated heading tape earlier on and there are loads of tapes to choose from and here are just a few. This is a very standard one, it's a little pencil pleat heading. You'll see three strings at the back of this heading tape. If you just pull those up you get these lovely little concertina folds. That's very elegant, very simple. This is a special one, it's a triple pinch pleat. Now you'll see groups of three pleats along the length of this heading. You can actually make a fan shape with those. Now this is nice on a curtain because on the right side of the fabric you can actually sew a little button under there so you make a real feature of that heading. Now if you didn't want to do any sewing, a new development is iron-on tape. And this comes in a variety of different headings. And a favourite of mine, you'll see this later on, an eyelet tape heading, that's really special. Our very pretty bay window. Now earlier you saw us doing a traditional curtain treatment, but this time I want to show you something more modern. As always, we're looking to maximise the light. Quite often in modern homes, they're a little on the small side, so we're looking for pale, light reflective fabrics. Now, check out my pole here. This is what I talked about earlier. These tailored stainless steel poles, they take a little bit of time to order, but when they come, they look fantastic. Now, let me show you those fabrics. When it comes to choosing the fabrics for this modern curtain, you want to think light and bright. Here I've got a lovely creamy fabric. It's got a pattern on it, but again, it's all cream. It's a kind of matte and shiny contrast. See how that glimmers in the light? That's gonna look fabulous up at the windows. But again, you know, I want something interesting on the curtain, so I've complemented it with this lovely slub linen. This is going to be a thick hem at the bottom of the curtain. Those two fabrics are gonna look lovely together. Now my heading tape has equally got to be as modern. I've got this lovely eyelet tape. This gets sewn onto the top of the curtain. And if I just demonstrate here, you just snap this eyelet into the heading. You've got a really modern look there, which is going to look great on a rail. Now, when I was thinking about a blind underneath those curtains, I could have had a load of choice. Voils, nets, plain blinds or pattern blinds. But what I have chosen is to make my own blinds from some linen. It's unlined fabric, just seamed down the sides and a channel at the bottom. Into the channel, just slide your piece of dowling. Now, you will just roll this up at the hem to the required drop and just fasten it off with some fabric ties. These fabric ties are sewn front and back. Two for each blind, just tie a nice generous knot and that will look lovely up at that window. Can't wait to get these up. Now I'm going to staple the blinds in position. I've already got wooden battens here ready to go.
Time for the curtains. Just check out this pole with this modern eyelet heading. It is fantastic and gives a really good look to this window. Look at this, a little Maribu feather on the hem, a really good finishing touch. It's time to give our French windows a bit of a modern twist now. So some unexpected things coming up a little bit later on, a bit of a treat for you. But look, our windows are all about letting loads of light in. So everything we're choosing for these window treatments are about the light reflective qualities. Check out the pole here. It's a pewter finish on that, a beautiful look. Cracked glass vinyls at the end. Again, a really lovely modern look. In a way, it kind of complements the furniture that we're sitting at too. But wait until you see the fabric, you'll love this. I had great fun selecting the fabrics for my modern French window. Now, I've chosen pink, a little bit scary for a lot of people I know because traditionally it's seen in bedrooms, but I think pink in a living room is absolutely fantastic and just right for our French doors. I've chosen three different tones of pink. A very pale pink, that's for the top of the curtain. A mid-tone of pink, that's for the middle section. And a hot pink for the hem. And I'm using a coloured lining. I've done away with the header tape and instead I've got a tied heading. These are all handmade ties which will directly tie onto the curtain rings on the pole. These are dead simple to make. You could use ribbon, but it's easy to sew them. Here, let me demonstrate. It's a piece of fabric, about 40 centimetres long. And what I do here is fold in the raw edges towards the middle of the fabric on both sides. Give that a little crease. And then fold the whole lot in half again so that you trap those raw edges. Just secure that with a little pin then take it to the machine and sew down as close as you can to that folded edge. Here it goes. Now don't worry about the machine going over the pins. If you put them at 90 degrees to the fabric, the machine will run over them quite smoothly. That's my little tie there. And then once I've, I've made six or seven of those, I just insert them into the top heading. They're ready to go now. Easy. Well, I warned you there'd be some unexpected pleasures. Now, here's one of them. These are beautiful. They're bits of shell cut into circles with a mother of pearl showing. And I've strung them all together to create a kind of beaded curtain effect. I'm just tying these onto the plastic curtain track. They do look really pretty, don't they? And I tell you, another good thing about this is if the door's slightly open and there's a breeze, they catch the wind and they make a beautiful noise. The ties are fixed directly onto the curtain rings and then I'm just sliding the whole lot onto the curtain pole. But don't worry if you haven't got rings, you can tie them equally successfully directly onto the pole. These are great, I love these. Now don't be afraid of using this colour. There you have it, four completely different curtain treatments, two completely different window styles. But I hope you'll see that whatever Anglian window you choose, it's a great starting point to creating a whole new look in your home.
This video is accompanied by a fact sheet with information on all these products.